Hello fellow mutants, beautiful nerds. I hope you are all fine today. Uh, I am fine, thank you for asking. This is Adam Savage in my cave and I am taking some questions from tested patrons regarding my tenure as a Mythbuster. And today's question comes courtesy of Kyle Bennett with an extra E, so maybe it's Benetti. Uh, he says, did you ever get to meet or interact with the narrator of the show? His voice was iconic alongside the Mythbusters crew. Um, the same question for the folklorist, Heather. Uh, yes, we did meet Heather. I appreciate you remembering that we had a folklorist because she only was on the show for one season. Um, specifically because that, well, I mean, we drifted way beyond folklore by the end of the first season. That's definitely true. Um, so regarding modern folklore, there, there wasn't a lot to get into uh, about folklore once we're doing YouTube videos, <laughs> right? Um, but you're asking specifically about my friend and colleague, Rob Lee. Uh, and Rob Lee is a Canadian from Australia who narrates American television shows. <laughs> yes, uh, Rob I agree with you. Rob's voice is iconic and a completely important, vital part of Mythbusters, which is why it was so sad for me. For those of you who live in the UK and watched Mythbusters in the UK, from my understanding, and I have never seen one of these cuts. Actually, if somebody has one, I'd love to see it. Um, from my understanding, the British version of Mythbusters was half an hour long and narrated by somebody that wasn't Rob. And I don't know how that show would work. Rob's... <sighs> okay. Realize that the producers of Mythbusters, the very first thing they would do at the very beginning of a script was go to cliche.com and look for all the most obvious puns. Uh, they would then look for even more puns. And then once they'd written a script with a whole bunch of puns in it, they would add some even more puns. And puns, they're fine. They're fine. They're often low-hanging fruit. They're definitely within the dad humor school of jokes. But it's not easy to read a pun. It is non-trivial to make it funny and not feel like you're insulting the audience, frankly. But I have a favorite pun, and Rob killed the delivery on this one. Uh, it's from the first second season. I can't even remember which. In the very first pilots, we painted Jamie Gold, uh, a la the Goldfinger myth that uh, Shirley Jackson, the actress that got painted gold in the movie Goldfinger with Sean Connery, uh, died from the... Was it Shirley Jackson? Am I getting that name wrong? At any rate, she famously supposedly died or suffocated from being painted with gold paint. Didn't happen. We painted Jamie Gold. I asked him if he'd ever seen any Gladiator movies. He didn't know what that joke meant. We all had fun. Then I got painted with gold paint because we had another thing to test. Um, and I had to have uh, my temperature taken internally. Uh, and that was not pleasant. Uh, it also sucks to get painted with gold paint, to get painted your whole body with latex paint. It's just like I, my mood dropped almost immediately. Um, but in the script, it said something about it's time to gild his lily white hide. Gild a lily. Gild my lily white, lily white hide. Gild. Dude, that's a great pun. I love that pun. And Rob Lee, Rob Lee had this, has this way of reading a pun that I, I have such respect for. Because as he reads it, you can hear the smile in his voice, and you can also hear that slight ironic tinge that says, I'm sorry that I'm wasting your time with this joke, but as soon as we get it all done, we're gonna move on to the next one, it'll all be fine, here it goes. Like, all of that was inherent and made text by Rob's dry, laconic delivery, or laconic's not the word, but dry, very dry and yet uh, tongue firmly planted in cheek. He always, <laughs> I'm not, I've never asked Rob his opinion. 
about the puns that, that, that all the Mythbusters producers would write for the, for the narration script. I never asked him how he felt about that, but I suspect he would express that they were a challenge to read correctly and that, yeah, you have to read them with a knowing smile. You can't just, you can't just pretend it's not happening. You can't just read it as text. You gotta add some subtext because, well, it's there. Um, surprisingly, I have only spent, I've only hung out with Rob, I think on four or five separate occasions. And those were always at the Emmys. Um, Mythbusters famously lost eight or nine Emmys in a row. Uh, we were nominated uh, eight or nine times. We lost repeatedly to all sorts of other shows. And I'm sad about that. I would have loved, uh, uh, our entire crew would have loved the feather in our cap of a, of a genuine Emmy, but it was not to be. Um, however, at the Emmys was often a really great moment for the Australian crew. Mythbusters was edited uh, and produced out of Australia, out of Sydney by Beyond Productions. So we get to see all those folks that we love. John Luscombe, Jenny O'Shea, and Rob Lee, and then we combine them with the San Francisco crew. Dan Tapster would come from England. It was just, it was just like a reunion every year. I missed that part of the Emmys. <laughs> you didn't ask, but here's the thing about losing an Emmy. It sucks. It sucks. You're sitting there in the audience. We were always the last category. So I had to sit through this three-hour Creative Arts Emmys for that last category. I, I am not complaining. I am not complaining. I am so lucky to have gotten to do this. But you're sitting there after three hours, you're tired, your category comes up, and you find yourself surprised. I found myself surprised by how much I wanted it. At that moment, I'd been ignoring it the whole time or kind of not feeling one way or the other, or being kind of cool with any outcome. And then they read your category and they read the other nominees and you're like, man, I really, really want this. And then it doesn't happen. And then you feel crappy for a little while, like 15 minutes. Uh, your wife might lean over and say, She'll be right. Uh, and then there is this hilarious death march from the, uh, uh, the Nokia Theater. Wasn't the Nokia Theater? I think it is. It, sorry. From the Emmy Theater. I guess I don't know if this is Nokia, but from the Emmy Theater, there's this march from the Emmy Theater to the Governor's Ball, and everyone walks like two blocks. And it's on that walk that you feel better. Because you're just walking with all these other people, most of whom have lost. And you're also witnessing and seeing some of your favorite people on television. My favorite year was the final year. It's arguably the year that I wanted to win the most uh, and felt really sad that we didn't win. And then we're on the march. We're walking. We had brought some of our friends to come with us to the Emmys. And that was really, really lovely. And then as we're walking to the governor's ball, I noticed that ahead of us, these two preternaturally beautiful human beings, uh, and it is um, Harry Hamlin and Lisa Rena, who are not only like twice as uh, as handsome, as attractive in person as you would imagine they are, seriously, but just, like jaw droppingly sweet. I I literally just said Harry Hamlin, <laughs> and turned around and I said, the character you're playing on Mad Men this year is a crazy enigma, and I love it. <laughs> That's that's kind of how I approach other celebrities I like. And he was like, well, thank you very much. In this voice that was like someone pouring syrup all over me. And then Lisa Reno like turned around and engaged with us, asked us, asked my wife and I some questions. They were just delightful. But that was not what you asked about. You asked about Rob Lee. Power to Rob Lee. Um, I am sure he is still narrating awesome shows. Um, yeah, he was an intrinsic deeply vital part of the Mythbusters crew and an honorary, a genuine Mythbuster in his own right. Thank you guys so much for these questions. Tested patrons, yeah, your questions are great. Um, I will continue to answer them as long as you keep submitting them. Thank you guys for joining me. I will see you next time.